BioBalance HealthCast episode 147, Polycystic Ovaries. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today we're going to talk about polycystic ovaries. Now, this may not sound like a really great subject for people who deal with postmenopause in general, but this is a subject for the young and subject for older women because it's a genetic it's a genetic defect basically. It's a okay. there it's a multi-genetic problem. Basically people who have this syndrome and the syndrome isn't named well, okay? Because polycystic is what it was named 60 years ago when the first thing we'd find was a, an ovary with a whole bunch of cysts on it, and that's what led us to find the rest of these symptoms. So this is what polycystic ovaries sh looks like. In young women, it looks like a normally developing young woman who, de who de develops obesity over a summer. All of a sudden, she goes from being having a normal body to becoming obese. She develops facial hair, hair sometimes on her breasts, sometimes on her chest. She um, actually gets depression because she has, her ovaries are not functioning. She doesn't have periods. And when she does, they're about three or four months apart and they're really heavy because she's not ovulating. Sometimes she'll get pain at ovulation when she's trying to ovulate or for the two weeks after the middle of the cycle. Uh, generally, patients also who have all of the genes for this, they start balding. So they're, they have balding on the top of their head and at, and at their temples because they don't have too much testosterone. They have too much androgens. Androgens are like testosterone, but they're from the adrenal gland. And they are not pleasant. They are not really a very good um, thing to have. They cause all the bad things that testosterone might have as a side effect and none of the good ones. So this is a nightmare. I mean, you're talking about a it girl a that has been regularly developing mm -hmm. into adolescence and has been normally progressing. And then in a very short window of time, she starts to become obese, have irregular and heavy periods, lose her hair, uh, become depressed, and, and have all these other symptoms. And, and at a time when you, in development, when you really need to fit in, yeah. all of a sudden you're not fitting in. And all of a sudden, you know, how cruel kids are. I mean, making yeah. people are making fun of you. And, and it's, a, it's a really difficult time. Now, that's somebody who has all the genes. Mm -hmm. Now, some people just have the obesity. Some people just have the thinning hair and the, and the hair on their bodies. Some people have just infertility. We find out they're polycystic because they have irregular cycles and then they bleed a lot, but they don't ovulate. So this is a multi-genetic thing. So a gynecologist doing a regular exam wouldn't necessarily see or notice that they were polycystic? Well, uh, I mean, how, how do you determine If that? you have somebody who has, who has all the genes for polycystic ovaries, you know who they are when they walk in the door. They look you just see similar. It, you know. They have yeah. kind of a round moon face because their cortisol is high. Kind of like that endomorph, ectomorph body. Right. They're, en they're endomorph, but more than endomorph. Round face, usually a, a goiter. Usually they have low thyroid, so they usually have kind of their neck kind of sticks out because their thyroid's enlarged. All their fat is in their abdomen. They sometimes have um, stretch marks because their cortisol is so high. They also yeah. are often have insulin resistance or prediabetes, so you'll see kind of a darkened skin under their arms and inside the, their thighs. So, I mean, this is something when I, I walk, I, when I'm walking around, I can see people who have this and they may not even know they have this. Mm -hmm. So this is something as I'm gonna go through young people and then older people. In young women, um, the biggest goal for polycystic ovaries is to shut their ovaries down because it's helping make all of these androgens, okay? So we wanna make them quiet and we wanna give her more estrogen so that we can combat all of the male hormone or the androgens. So when you say shut them down, you mean a hysterectomy? No, 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 shut them down as in give her birth control pills. Okay. So that we can stop. Override the chemistry that's, right. that's fire, misfiring. Right, and override the, 
the ov ovary making all these cysts. It's, it's basically an ovary that has a thick covering and those little eggs that are supposed to pop out in, into the tube, mm -hmm. they basically are trapped. And so they, you make a big cyst around it and it hurts. The ovaries get really big and they ache and sometimes they don't go back down in between periods. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes they have a lot of pain. So you want to shut the ovary down because it's secreting things you don't want them to have. It's also causing them to have so much estrogen in terms of imbalanced estrogen. No, you know, we've called, we, we have estrogen and progesterone that balance one another. You have to ovulate to get progesterone. So they have estrogen, no progesterone. So they develop a thick lining in their uterus. They have heavy periods, but worse right. than that, they could over time develop precancerous lesions in their uterus. Because so, they're not cleaning themselves out. Right, because they're not ovulating and they're not bleeding. So, so go through the list of symptoms. Like if, if, if a couple of young teenage girls that I know that mm -hmm. I'm thinking about as you're describing mm -hmm. these things, what would I look for if I wanted to say to their mom, you know, this may be a part of what you guys are, are challenged by? Uh, a, a, quick, a quick weight gain is mm -hmm. common and, and in, the, in abdomen weight gain, mm -hmm. a lot of swelling. Um, right. Abdomen more than hips and thighs? Abdomen, abdomen more than hips and thighs. Okay. But central. Yeah. Usually their breasts aren't very large, but their abdomen is. Okay. So irregular periods, periods that happen every three to four months with, and with a heavy flow, and usually pain in between periods when their ovaries are trying to function. Mm -hmm. um, lots of hair, facial hair, breast hair. They, they even may but, have but arm not hair. not the kind of hair, that, the Lugo stuff that you not, get with no, the not eating like little, No, not like blonde hair. It's dark. Uh -huh. It's usually coarse. Okay. And hair around the nipples, hair sometimes down the line between the belly button mm -hmm. and the pubic bone. A lot of hair um, in the vulvar area. So these kids need a depilatory, a laser or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, in general, I, I'll tell you, I treat them with spironolactone, which is a diuretic that stops that kind of hair growth. Okay. So we use so it. So not only to help with the weight gain, but by eliminating fluids, but it stops the hair growth. Right. Which may in also the places, impact the depression. It doesn't stop the hair on their head. It just yeah. stops the hair in the wrong places. Right. So I treat them with spironolactone. They also can have terrible acne mm -hmm. because of the dihydrotestosterone that they make causes facial hair and acne. Mm -hmm. That shuts it down. So that's so that would be one of the things. Um, the male pattern baldness, mm -hmm. really thin hair here, sometimes thin in the front, but mostly here and at the temples. Yeah, this, this kind of... Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, just like that. Yeah. Not, the, not exactly this. Yeah, but, um, not exactly. But having kind of a round face, okay, sometimes they have a little hump, a little uh, pad of fat on the, their yeah. back yeah. of their neck. It makes their head come... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and uh, then the uh, enlarged thyroid, goiter, um, oftentimes you'll see them snacking all the time because they have sugar cravings. Because their cortisol's high, it makes them mm -hmm. want, need sugar all the time. Yeah. And so oftentimes that is one of the ways that they gain weight. They don't really, they eat almost all carbs. Yeah. They crave carbs, so they don't eat a really good balanced diet. Right. And oftentimes they're, um, they're exhausted, they're tired, they're just like, I don't want to do anything, so and they're you, depressed. So if you put one of them on a low-carb diet, the odds are they couldn't stay on it because the cravings would be too high. Unless you they also probably, well, they're teenagers; they probably wouldn't stay on it. But but the way I treat those, usually when I look at their lab, they've got high tri triglycerides, high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. They have uh, elevated insulin, so they they're in a pre-diabetic state. They have a lot of insulin making fat all the time, mm -hmm. and that's another reason why they get tired. They their insulin and blood sugar go up and then way down. So hypoglycemia. Do okay. they have mood swings? They get angry and irritable? They can. I, I, most of the time, it's a very, most of the time that I've seen these gals, it's very, t very depressed, tired anger. Flat affect. Yeah. Flat affect. Mm -hmm. They're, they've just, they've given up. Mm -hmm. They just, they've, they feel ostracized. Well, God knows why. I, mean, I know they were one person and then that, the summer goes yeah. by and they're another person when they, it's kind of like they wake up and they're in a, another country. They don't yeah. know how to act. Right. And their mothers are bugging them to lose weight. And, and, you know, I understand that. Sure. But their mothers don't realize that this is very hard for them because they have a genetic yeah, they, they reason a to be to like this. To, to, to see it. They, they're caught up in the moment. So oftentimes I find, so they may have prediabetes, hypoglycemia. They may have hypothyroidism. 
and they usually have a high cortisol level. So when I see all of this, basically what I treat them with is something to help, help the hair and acne, spironolactone, something, something to shut their ovaries down, which is like a birth control pill like uh, Demulin or um, one of the estrogen, Desigen, one of the estrogen dominant birth control pills that actually shuts the ovary down. It just doesn't make it just not ovulate. So it has to be strong enough to do that, like 50 micrograms of, of estrogen. So that's... And you give them progesterone too then? And progesterone's in the pill as well. Okay. So that balances it, keeps them from having any trouble with the lining of their uterus. Then I give them metformin, mm -hmm. which is usually a diabetic drug. But this drug shuts down that insulin surge, mm -hmm. and then it shuts down their hypoglycemia so they're not so tired. And I put them on a low carb diet at the same time, and they take an uh, extended release metformin so that it lasts all day, not just for a meal, but all day, because somebody who's pre-diabetic needs it all day. Mm -hmm. So I, I do that with them. I put them on a low carb but balanced diet, more like a Mediterranean low carb diet, mm -hmm. but, but no simple sugars and flour and things like, or cookies, candy cake. None of that, no soda. They usually are addicted to soda because that gives them energy. So right. I put them on all of that. That's a lot to ask a teenager. Mm -hmm. But I say, you're going to get benefit out of it because you're going to start looking better. You're going to start losing weight. You're going to start feeling better. Every once in a while, at the second or third visit, if somebody's hitting the wall, I, I might use a diet pill for a few months just to give them some benefit of a fast weight loss because they just, they just need it to keep them going. But I don't do that for a very extended period of time. A segue, how do diet pills work? Is it uh, taste suppression? Is it? No, well, no, Sensa works by taste suppression. You know that, you see that on television. Right. Diet pills are like ADD medicine. Okay. They're, they're um, amphetamines. They stimulate norepinephrine in your brain. You have more energy and you don't think of food. It suppresses the, the hunger mm -hmm. and, it, and it increases your metabolism. So, okay. so those things go. But Funny, ADD people who take diet pills don't lose weight, don't generally yeah, lose different. weight unless they're children. Yeah. But adults who take that for mm -hmm. their ADD stay the same. It doesn't work like that for them. Yeah. It doesn't really help them with their diet. Yeah. So in any, in any case, that's how diet pills work. But, but this is a lifetime condition. So Yes. So the next step is, once we, even if we, I can get them back to a normal body habitus, right. It's a lifetime of eating low carb diet. Right. And then they get to when they want to have kids. Right. And then usually people with polycystic ovaries have trouble getting pregnant, but I don't that does not mean I want anybody to stop using birth control because the minute I say that, mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody'll stop because I'm not fertile and then they'll get pregnant. But not everybody is infertile who has polycystic ovaries. So Having said that, many people are because they just can't get that egg out of the ovary. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we have to use Clomid and Metformin to help them mm -hmm. ovulate because the ovary is an insulin sensitive organ and they need that to, to help them ovulate. And usually I, can, I used to keep them on Metformin through the first six, six weeks, eight weeks of their pregnancy just so that they kept the baby Everything was fine Give until, it a healthier chance until to it hit the end of the first trimester. So, yeah. so in that in that way, that's how I deal with young women, and, and it's a it's a struggle all the way up. And not all of them have this problem. The one test is an LH and FSH test. Sounds ridiculous. It's from your pituitary off the pill. The way I diagnose it is if your LH is two to three times That's higher. The luteinizing hormone. Right, is two to three times higher than your FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone. That's a diagnosis of PCO. So that's that's the definitive diagnosis, even mm -hmm. if you don't look like all of these things. Because right. some people try and, really and that's hard. That's a blood test that'll and give that's you a that? That's a blood test. Okay. Some people work out so much, they don't really look like this. Right. And they've they've kind of fixed themselves Find by- Find a compensatory mechanism right. to try to fight their way through it. Right. Yeah. So th then when people get to, say they get to 40, then their ovaries calm down. They usually have a little grace period in there. And, but then they really miss the testosterone portion of it. They were made for, they usually have really good sex drives. So they were made to have a lot of testosterone, not, not the androgens from the adrenal, but the testosterone part. So they're missing that energy and that sex drive even more than most people. Now, are you saying that 
for women that have polycystic ovaries all along or just those that get into their 40s and get in that grace period? Is that when that overactive sex drive comes in? No, they, usually people with polycystic ovaries who aren't on the pill have a pretty good sex drive. Okay. But they get, but they miss it when their, their own testosterone drops. And mm -hmm. so that's when they come to see me. And usually they know they've had polycystic ovaries. Sometimes I see it on their lab. I, I right. go, oh, have you ever had polycystic ovaries? And they're like, no, what? What's that? Yeah. So we go through this discussion. Usually I'll find that their thyroid's kicking out at the same time and that they may have prediabetes. So I treat all of that at the same time if they don't come to me until the period of time when they're starting to age. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is something that your doctor has to look for and then tell you that that's your genetic makeup and then help you combat it because it's something you do have to combat. My, my be best story for PCO is that my, one of my um, employees, a long time ago, had a darling little daughter, and I watched her. She, she didn't look like anybody else in the family, but she looked like Grandpa. Mm. And she was really round, and she was really chatty, and she was, she, every time I saw her at a funeral, and so she's, every time I saw her, for three hours, she's eating. It's always something like sugary. Right. So I asked her mom, she was only 13, and I said, I think you need to bring her in. Let me do some blood tests. So I did, and her cholesterol was off the charts. Her triglycerides were off the charts. Her blood sugar was up. She, I mean, she, she looked like somebody three times her age, mm -hmm. and, or worse. Mm -hmm. And so she was, she was in a state of developing plaque. She ha, I mean, wow. you know, that's what happens when every, all of your hormones are, are abnormal. So basically, I put her on this regimen that I just discussed early on, like 14. By the time she went to college, she was normal size. She, had, she was having normal periods. She was doing great. She didn't, she didn't have any, any of the evidence that she had this issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's totally normal and beautiful. And all of her cholesterol and her, her triglycerides went down. Her pediatrician at the time, I sent the lab to her and she said, holy smokes. Mm -hmm. This, you know, this is a huge health risk to her. She has to have something done. Yeah. And so then she let me take care of the, of the um, hormonal or, or uh, genetic So you problems. put her on birth control pills and metformin and spir spironolactone. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Yeah. And, and she doesn't have to take all of that now. She's just mm -hmm. on the pill. She's learned how to run and help manage her diet and not eat the wrong thing. So... I mean, it can be life-saving to have this diagnosis and know it. Yeah, and and, and know you the, have the diagnosis. It's it's not a uh, it's not something that they develop because they've been abusing themselves in terms of uh, sugar consumption or it's not their fault. Uh, bad diet. Yeah, it, it's, it's not their fault. It's because they've been swimming in the wrong end of the gene pool. Right. To you know, and it's not really mom and dad's problem because they don't they they have the genes. They were given their genes. Right. So no one has fault here. It's just. How do we approach it? Yeah, you know, and putting somebody on a diet without giving them the help to be able to follow the diet is kind of cruel. So, so because that people, makes them frustrated. People watching today, the the key piece of information would be if you see a radical change, if your daughter's been developing normally all along, and she hits a wall where a, a, a multiple barrage of symptoms that make her different and and visually different as well as experientially different. Go to your doctor and say, is it possible that we could be dealing with PCO? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and that, you, that can save the day just like it did with my, my um, employee's daughter. Well, and, and I mean, uh, certainly people go to the doctor and say, uh, could we be dealing with depression? Could we de be mm -hmm. dealing with ADD? Could we be, but, but PCO isn't really on the event horizon for very many people. No, and, that, and it's also something that, you know, OBGYNs are just so busy and, right. and so overbooked. They, you know, they may just think, well, you're on the pill anyway for birth control, so, mm -hmm. so okay, you're half treated, not really discuss it. So you have a list of six or eight symptoms that you've mentioned here. Mm -hmm. Should, we'll, we'll put those on the website? Yeah, and, we'll put uh, those on, and then podcast. we'll also put on the, um, some of the lab values, you need, the labs you need to have taken. And then other illnesses that happen with PCO, like diabetes and hypothyroidism, uh, insulin resistance is prediabetes. 
the high lipids and the uh, high high triglycerides that go along with high sugars, um, you can it can lead to uterine and breast cancer down the line, just because they're so the hormones are so overwhelmingly estrogen. So and gallstones because the the thing we learned in medical school was fertile fat 40, but it happens before 40 in these kids. Usually it's early. So gallstones wow. go along with a lot of cholesterol and uh, obesity and estrogen. Okay. So, so remember, it's genetic. They didn't do something to get it, but it is serious and it is treatable. And if you start to see a, a cluster of these symptoms present, for heaven's sake, go and discuss that with your doctor and, and ask, is it a possibility that my daughter uh, ha has PCL? Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.